שלום, everyone. The Gemara in Baba Kama, in the chapter we are at, Perik uh, Gozel uh, about the robber, uh, is, is using many times the option of an oath, um, asking someone to swear in order to know whether they're saying the truth or not. And the, uses of, the use of oath, of an oath is uh, something that we, are, we know uh, is a very, is a common thing, especially in the, in, the, in the ancient world, not only in the Tanakh do we hear of many different uh, people making an oath, uh, but it was a usual thing uh, around around the area. Um, not only people take oath, also God in the Torah is is taking an oath. And if we think about it for a little, we'll, we'll remember, you know, Avram is swearing to the king of Sodom, and Avimelech and Avram are both, you know, uh, um, um, declaring a covenant, and they're doing it over an oath. And and Eliezer, the servant of Avram, is taking an oath to bring the right woman to right wife to Yitzchak. Um, Yaakov and Lavan are are also taking an oath to each other. Esav and Yaakov over the over the Bechora, um, and Yosef is swearing to his father to bring his uh, bones to Eretz Israel after he passes away. And also ya Yosef asks his brothers to swear to him that they will um, not bury him in Mitzrayim, not, not leave him in Mitzrayim, but take his bone up to Eretz Israel when they leave Egypt. So it's not, not a familiar thing. And taking an oath is is an act, is something we um, we hear. And, and the oath in the Tanakh, in the Torah especially, is not just to swear, but is to use the word of, to use the name of God in order to make the oath, in order to swear. And there's a difference between neder and shvu'ah. Uh, neder, we saw in Masechet Nedarim, neder it has to do with, uh, with a t'nai, you know, there's some kind of a, a, um, of a condition, but swear shvu'a um, is not. And there's different, there are four different kinds of uh, kinds of shvu'ot, um, and which I'm not going to go into uh, all four of them, but it, it is important to know that in our chapter, mostly between um, uh, page 103 and 110, but not only, uh, there's a repetition uh, on, the, on, the, um, uh, on the habit of, 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 of an oath, uh, whether uh, in the Beit Din, an oath of a testimony, um, or or an, an oath of a, of a deposit, in different or or definitely um, a false a false uh, oath. So I'd like to delve into that idea of the uses the usage of God's name in order in order to take an oath. And I'm sharing this my the sources. And let's see. So um, the question is to swear to swear or not to swear, to take an oath or not to take an oath. And the Pasuk in Vamidbar is, is saying the following, if a householder make a vow to God or make an oath uh, imposing an obligation on himself, he shall not break his pledge. Okay, in other words, we take it seriously. He must carry out all that has crossed his lips. And another Pasuk in Vayikra, in Leviticus is saying, uh, or when a person utters an oath for bad or good purpose, um, and it was hidden from them, but later the person realized realizes guilt in any of this matter, then you know he should bring he should bring um, a, a sacrifice. In other words, in in those two uh, psukim, we hear that maybe it's better not to take an oath. But if you already used those words um, to uh, to make a vow to God or take a, to take an oath uh, uh, to to impose an obligation on on yourself, you should you should act on it. You know, just be very sure not to break your words. And indeed, in another pasuk in Tehillim, in 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 Perek uh, Kuf Yutet, we hear the famous words we all know, I have firmly sworn to keep your just rules. In other words, there is a usage of using, uh, of, of swearing in order to keep a mitzvot. And, and something we saw in Masechet Nedarim already, that Rav Gidel said, that Rav said, from where is it 
derived that one may take an oath to fulfill a mitzvah. It is as it stated, I have sworn and I have confirmed it to absorb your righteous uh, or, uh, ordinance. In, uh, and the Gemara asks, are they not already under an oath from Mount Sinai? Okay, when we took the oath, you know, when we accepted the covenant with God, we took an oath to keep the mitzvot. But rather, it teaches us this, it is permitted for a person to motivate themselves to keep the mitzvot, and that's why it's okay. But when we come back to the legal um, uh, part of side of, of, of taking an oath, we're actually going to a very serious ordeal um, mentioning both in Maseret Adibot, in, in Shemot, in Exodus 20, and in Vayikra, in Parashat Kedoshim. And the Pasuk in Shemot, uh, in Aseret Adibot, is saying, Lo Hashem halashav, You shall not swear falsely by the name of your God, uh, for God will not clear one who swears falsely by God's name. Okay. On the surface, it doesn't sound like this is an this is an oath that um, that, that someone is is swearing. But it's it, it's understood to be used using the name of God in 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 an in an oath or a vow. And uh, and the other pasuk in Parashat uh, Kedoshim, you shall not swear falsely by my name. Uh, profaning the uh, profaning the name of your God, I am God, and the two psukim are 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 always in the commentaries and in the midrashim are seen as complementing each other. They belong to each other. It's the same thing. When you take God's name for false, it's as if you swear uh, um, uh, falsely. And the midrash, a beautiful midrash in Tanhuma is actually saying in terms of those two chapters, those two um, parashot in the Tana, in the Torah, that in Leviticus uh, speak unto the, in the beginning of Parashat Doshim uh, starts with speak unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel. Can the Berel call Adat Israel and say unto them, you shall be holy. What reason did he have to speak this parasha in an assembly, you know, assembling all of them. And why did he not say, speak unto the children of Israel? Why to the to all the children of Israel, to the entire congregation, as uh, as in the rest of the parashiot? And rather than uh, speak unto the whole congregation of the, of the children of Israel. And because, says the Midrash, all of the Ten Commandments are included within it. In other words, in Parashat Kedoshim, there are the entire Ten Commandments. And that's why we have to assemble everybody. And how is it? And I just brought you three examples. In the commandment, it is written, I am the Lord your God, and I am, and, and here it says, I am the Lord your God. In the commandment, it is written, you shall have no other gods beyond, uh, beside me, and here do not turn into idols. In the commandment it is written, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And here in Kadoshim it says, you shall not swear falsely by my name. In other words, very clear to the Midrash that these two psukim are standing one opposite to another. It's it's from the same topic. And lotisai shem Hashem, it's as if lotishava bishmila sheker, not to um, uh, um, carry the name of God falsely and not to swear uh, falsely by uh, uh, by the name of God. It's uh, it's really two sides of the same things. And Rashi, uh, in a in in a commentary to uh, to Leviticus, to the, our our pasuk in Vayikra, is 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 asking a very interesting question. He says, uh, a, a, "And you shall not swear by my name." And why is this stated at all? Like, why do say Loti Shavah B'Shmila Sheker? In Vayikra, we already heard in Sefer Shmot, Loti Sa'et Shmila Shav, you should not carry my name in uh, in vain. Uh, how does how does the particular uh, form of the words used here tell us more than it contained in the third commandment? Since it says in Exodus, Tha shall not take the name of the Lord God in vain. I might have, says Rashi, in, uh, inferred that one is not la uh, labeled except he swore by the proper name, like Yudke Vavke. 
and of the God, the name of God. When whens do I know that all names that are descriptive of God's attributes can are included in the prohibition because of the scriptures? You shall not swear by my name to a lie. In other words, Rashi is saying the repetition in Vayikra, Lo Tishavu Bishmila Shakar, you shall not swear in my name in false, is in any name, not only the name Yudke Vavke, as it says in Sefer Shmot in Exodus, but any name of God, any, uh, uh, any, um, um, excuse me. Uh, any any name of God can any descriptive way that we use to to describe God it, in that name you may not swear uh, uh, or uh, or use the name of God uh, in vain. But the Ibn Ezra is 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 opening the the way to a deeper understanding and says the Ibn Ezra, why is it why is it that why when we swear you know, falsely uh, by God's name, it is, is it's profaning. It's v'chilal ta'ashem elokecha. And it's de, de, um, uh, uh, prof profaning the name of your God. And says the Ibn Ezra, when the scriptures read, so that the profane the name of the, uh, of the God, because as I have noted, the one who swears falsely denies God. Okay, and here I think Ibn Ezra is, is, is bringing us into the depth of the idea of a false swear or carrying the name of God uh, uh, in vain. Okay, using the words that describe God in vain or falsely, it, it, as if denying God. And the idea that we have a way of saying the name of God is something very precious. And if we take it for granted or belittle it, then it becomes um, then it becomes an, an absolute sin, as if we deny God. The Rambam uh, in Mishneh Torah, in the the list of mitzvot lotas, of mitzvot of not, not what not to do, uh, is 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 mentioning the different the different uh, ways of shvua, uh, uh, not to violate an oath. That's that's one one thing. Not to take an oath in vain. It's the second thing, and not to prof not and not to profane the name of the Holy One. Blessed be it. Is the third uh, not to do mitzvah that has to do with the name of God, with any oath uh, oath or swear with the name of God, and that just to show us how serious this is. The three different ways of not respecting God through not respecting the name of God. And, and the Sefer HaChinuch has a beautiful explanation of the root of, uh, of the two sides of the, mitz of the mitzvah, of not to swear for vain uh, uh, falsely and not to carry the name of God falsely. And he says the following, to not swear in vain, that we not swear pointlessly, as it is stated, it is, uh, as it is stated, um, it is from the root of this command of this commandment uh, that it is for people to know and fix in their souls and strength and strengthen the faith in their hearts about God. Blessed be He, who is the uh, the he who is in the heaven above and exists forever. That there is nothing else like His existence, and it is fitting. And, oblig and obligatory upon us when we mention his great name upon our actions and upon our words to mention it with fear, with awe, with trembling and with perspiration. And not like those that joke and speak about something light, such as things that exist and perish and do not continue to exist like us people. And the other thing of the of uh, uh, of the lowly world, and 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 the other things of the lowly world. Hence, it is fitting in order to fix this matter in our hearts, and that His awe should be in front of us to give us life and merit. We are obligated in His uh, in this commandment that we not mention His holy name pointlessly, and that one who is lenient and transgresses 
it is punished with lashes. I think that one of the things that Sefer HaChinuch is saying here is that God gave us the ability to speak and speaking, talking, using language is like God created, God created the world with the world with words. And as having Selem Elohim, the image of God, is part of it is our ability to use words. So we should use words to the positive, to be create, to create good things. But when we use the name of God in vain or falsely, it's we are betraying that attribute, that godly attribute that we have to create with words, to be positive with words. And that's why it's so uh, it, it's such a serious uh, uh, transgression. And to the other mitzvah, to the other mitzvah lota of not to swear in God's name uh, in vain, says uh, uh, says Sefer Achinuch, and from this root itself. Uh, is the matter of a false oath, oath, meaning to say, when we when he uh, swears to fulfill something and does not fulfill it, this is called an oath of speech about which another separate commandment comes in the order of kedushim tihiyu, as it is stated, and you shall not swear falsely by my name, as one who swears by the great name of God to say something was, and yet he knows that there is falsehood in his mouth, behold, he is acting lightly with the oath, with the O of, uh, the o, o of God, as it is to say in his heart, he is not true. And here we hear for the first time the word true, okay? the other side or the opposite of of a lie is the truth. Not, not getting used to using an oath or, or swear and, and use the name of God for vain or in a false way is, is training yourself to be truthful, to always say the truth and not to hide behind any big words, especially not, uh, not God's name and let his lips be silent. And so the one who swears to do something and afterwards do not, does not do it is behold, uh, um, does not do it, it is behold also among the rebels against light and the deniers of truth. And that's another word. In other words, we have in one, in one side, we have falsehood and we have a lie. And in the other side, we have truth and light. God used his words to in truth and in light. And if we use God's name, the opposite of truth and light, then we are betraying God and betraying the God, the, the, God, the image of God that we have in, in us. Um, uh, as the understanding of swore is according to my opinion. And then here, Sefer Chinuch will tell us what he think a swear is. And he says uh, that he conclude in his heart and says with his mouth to fulfill that thing that he swore about and that he will never change it. Just as God, may he be blessed, exists and does not change forever and, ne and ever. And that is why the expression sworn uh, nishba always come in the passive meaning to say that he is acted upon by his words to make it exist. Just like he said about his existence, blessed be he. Using a words correctly, swearing to do something and do it, making us to a level of, the, of our, to, to look like the level of our creator. Like he said words and it happened and he's, truthful and and so so do, so do we need to try to be uh, uh, to be like God and I want to I want to end with uh, with a beautiful midrash in the Sifra that says like why why is it that if we lie if we give a a, a, a false oath uh, oath 
uh, we, we profane the name of God. And says the Sifra, uh, okay, when we profane the name of God, we are hereby taught that a vain oath is a profanation of the name. Variantly, another way of understanding it says the Midrash in the Sifra, and you profane the word in Hebrew, vechilalta, you thereby become profane and vulnerable to attack to animals and beasts. And I, I want to suggest another explanation in, in the text from the Hebrew. You become as you become, you leave, you, you, you forget, you put away the holiness, that thing which is above and makes you different from the other animals. Because we are the same. The only thing which is different is that we have Tzelem and Lokim. We were created in the image of God. So if we profane the name of God and take it lightly, that means that we don't really view that godly thing that we have in us as an important, as valuable thing. And that's why, and when we do that, we became, we become like an animal uh, and a beast with, without the uniqueness of a, of a human spirit, of, of a neshama. And, uh, and Yirmiyahu, and we'll, we'll end with, uh, with the prophet Yirmiyahu, Yirmiyahu says uh, in a beautiful pasuk, V'nishbat uh, Hashem. Okay, like uh, the swear is always coming with the name of God, and swear as God lives in sincerity, justice, and righteousness. And when you make a swear, do it with sincerity, justice, and righteousness. Nay, and then says the Navi, nations shall bless themselves by you, and praise themselves by you. In other words, the prophet Jeremiah is saying, you know, to 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 be a nation, to use to be a nation, to train to be a nation that never swears for in vain, ever carries the name of God in vain, and always have that name of God in, in front of us, and that leading us to live in truth, sincerity, justice, and righteousness, that will cause the rest of the world to look at us and to say, yes. You know, we want to bless like them. We want to live lives like them in, in, in the way that they keep um, the, the name of the creator in front of them and, and carrying it in with, with respect. And the Midrash in Bereshit Rabbah, and we're not going to read it, but the Midrash is really beautiful. And he's saying, God is telling, God is telling, uh, God is telling people who wants to swear and to take an oath Really, you want to do it? You can only do it if your attributes as human beings are going to be like the three great God-fearing um, people, Abraham, uh, let me find this for you, Abraham, Joseph, and and Job. In other words, the Midrash in, in Bamid Baraba is saying, okay, you want to swear? You want to take an oath with the name of God? That's fine. But first check to see that your attribute as high as those of Abraham, Eov, and Yosef. But Rashi is saying, is quoting that Midrash without the names. And he's saying, well, you know what? Everyone can use the name of God in an oath. But here, the Pasuk on, uh, on Yirmiyahu is looking into, is, is, is looking for our sincerity. Uh, and you will and you will swear as the Lord lives in truth. When you swear by my name, you will swear in truth, not as now that is written concerning you. And if they say as the Lord lives, surely they swear falsely. In other words, what Rashi is saying, you want to use my name, use it in truth, not like the other people in, in the rest of the book of Jeremiah is that, it, that they're using the name of God falsely. Like each and every one of us can use the name of God after we really make sure and we work on our on our attributes and work on our inner thinking and our deeper understanding of what it means to be a human being that was created in the name of God, in the image of God. And then if it's clear and if it's understood, you can use my name and it will be not in vain. It, it's, it's going to be not falsely. Otherwise, you do it. 
and 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 you get punished. Um, and I hope this is just a very very quick uh, peek on the idea of uh, of swearing and of taking an oath. And hopefully we'll be able to always say, I have firmly sworn to keep your just rules. Nishbati v'akayema, nishmor mishpatei tzidkecha.